Today I am going to share my Smart Art Box project for, I think this was June's box. I'm so behind on my dates, I don't even know. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. If you are unfamiliar with what the Smart Art Box is, it is a monthly subscription box where every month you get a box full of full-size art supplies. And just for transparency, this video is being sponsored by Smart Art Box. One of my favorite things about these boxes is you're not just shipped a box full of supplies that you just figure out what to do with. If you get a box and it's full of stuff you've never used before, you're not gonna feel lost. You get this really nice brochure that goes over the history of whatever style you're working in, you get project pointers, you get a bit of information about the actual supplies you're using, and then detailed information about each individual thing that came in the box. On the back, you get full instructions, step by step, of how to complete your project so you won't feel lost at any point. It's like an art lesson in a box. So let's go ahead and take a look at what came in this month's box, or last month's, whatever month's this was. So starting out, we've got the brochure that we have already gone over. I like that it feels like you're opening a Christmas present or a birthday present with this with the tissue paper. The first product in here is a brush that is great for stenciling. Next, we've got this set of Faber-Castell Gelato colors. And I've never used these before. I was really excited to give those a try. We've got a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Big Brush Pen in black a set of stencils. These were cool because they kind of stick to the paper just a little bit, which made them really easy to use. And a huge pad of watercolor paper, so you can make a lot of projects with what comes in this box. Really nice paper, very thick, almost like cardstock. And last in the box is a paintbrush for some of the detail because you can use water with those gelato colors for blending and mixing, so that's what that guy is for. So I decided to do a flamingo. You guys are shocked, I'm sure. I started by getting everything drawn out on my paper, and then I used, I just used another piece of the watercolor paper, but you can use any paper if you don't wanna waste it. And I cut out a cover, basically, or a kind of like a template or a stencil to cover the flamingo area so that when I'm doing the stenciled background, I keep the flamingo clean, since I don't want this green all over him just taped that into place. They chose my stencil and I'm just going to position that onto the paper. I have to say, I was so excited about this project. I opened it the night before I actually did the project. I literally lost sleep because I was so excited to make this the next day. I love playing with stencils for the background for art. And then the colors that came in this set for me were just perfect. It's got that beautiful aqua color. So I'm using something to scrape. This is actually just part of what came in a past smart art box for doing sculptures or sculpy clay. I don't know what it was, but I'm using this little tool just to scrape off. You could use a, an old ra razor blade, you could use a butter knife. I mean, anything to just scrape some of this off onto the just a separate piece of paper. What I'm going to do is take those shavings and add water to them, and that's what I'm going to do my stenciling with. The other thing that I found worked pretty well with these is just to scribble the bar onto the paper itself and re-wet that. This just made a bigger pile of my mixture. It's texture, if you've not used these before, I'd never even heard of them, I didn't know what they were. The gelatos, the texture is very similar to oil pastels, maybe a little bit thicker. But unlike oil pastels, these are actually water soluble. Now I'm just taking this paintbrush and mixing water into it. Needed a lot of water to dissolve this. And I don't think that there's any like formula of 50% water to 50% the product. You just mix it until you get the texture and consistency that you want. If you want it to be more translucent, use a little bit more water. If you want it more opaque, then you're going to use more of the gelato. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. So you may want to look into that before you repeat how I'm pronouncing this. But I'm going to go ahead and add water to make this a consistency that I thought would work well for doing the stencil. Just stirring that in. And I ended up having to make a couple of batches, so you may want to make more to start with than what I did here. I didn't know how much I would need, so I didn't make too much because I didn't want to waste them so that I can do lots of other projects after this. 
first I tried the little spongy tool that came in the set with the gelatos. I didn't love the results with that. I ended up switching over to the sponge or the stencil brush that was came in the box. I liked that much better, but I wanted to give that a try. Ended up putting that to the side fairly quickly and then switched over to a brush meant for the stencils. And I really liked the results I got that way better. It was much, much more opaque than what I was able to get with the little spongy brush that came with the gelatos themselves. Or gelatos, whatever. We know I can't pronounce things. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. Now, I'm able to be fairly messy. Usually when you do stencils, you kind of want to come straight down. You don't want to move the brush back and forth like you see me do a few times here because it'll slide under the stencil. With this stencil, it's stuck to my paper. It's very low tack, but it's stuck enough to the paper that the brush isn't sliding underneath the stencil. The stencil's not moving around. It kept everything very, very nice and clean. These stencils were really cool. This one is the Americana Gloss Enamels Stick-On Stencil. I will probably be looking into these to see if I can get some bigger stencils. I just like the material it was printed on too. I mean, that may be even something to make with a Cricut machine or a Cameo where you can make your own stencils. Something that sticks like this was really nice. So you can see I had to make another batch of this. These are very much like oil pastels too in that they will smudge. After you put it on there, you can smudge and blend them out. They don't really dry like acrylic paint or ink tents or something like that. These do smudge once they're they're applied, if you wanted them to, but they don't smudge, I wouldn't say as much as oil pastels, but they are blendable still. And you can tell here how important that cover I put over the flamingo was because see how I'm stamping this over where his head is going to be? That would have been really hard to cover with the pinkish orange color that I'm gonna put on top of this. But because he's covered, I can be messy and just stamp all the way through or stencil all the way through this without worrying about getting that onto the flamingo. It made my work stay very, very clean. And that's one of the things I like so much with the Smart Art Box. I wouldn't have thought to really do that had they not mentioned it in the instructions on the back. The step-by-step -step instructions tell you to block it out like this. And I don't think it would have even crossed my mind to do it that way um, had they not mentioned that. So this is why I always say I love the brochure that comes with these so much because you're not going to feel lost. They are going to walk you through step by step. And you don't have to do the project they tell you. Like their project, they showed a superhero, I think Wonder Woman, whereas I wanted to do something different, but I still used their tips. I still used their techniques and made it into some my own project. I'm just lining that up. I've got a, one of my postcards actually from Patreon. I'm lining that up to make sure that I've got my little squares where they need to go. And they're not quite right, so I can lift that up. Even though it sticks, you can still peel it up and move it around. That's not really a problem. But I wanna have, I don't need it perfect, but I want it kind of close. You're definitely still able to adjust and move that. This was probably my favorite type of stencil that I've used the way that it, it sticks to the project. It really did make it a lot easier than other stencils I've used before for making this sort of a background. So now I'm going to continue with the stencil there. And this side was the only one that I really had to watch that it was lined up because it continued straight down on that side of the flamingo's head. The other side, I just had to go for close. It wasn't so hard for me to line up on the other times I had to move this stencil around. I wanna make sure I get that filled in really well. You don't want this mixture to be too thinned, too watery, because it, even though the stencil sticks down, it still could slide under if you're using too much water. And this dries really, really quickly. Once I was finished with the stencil, I could move on to the flamingo. My first step is going to be to remove the cover that I've got over the flamingo. And I just wanna remove the tape slowly and away from the project so that I don't tear that because I just use regular masking tape with that. Luckily, this watercolor paper is really thick so it would be pretty hard to tear anyway. Next, I'm going to start with painting the pink of the flamingo. Now, it's not really pink, it's more of a pale orange, but 
that color doesn't come in this set or even pink. So in order to, to create what I need, I'm going to thin out the colors a lot with water. And that's what that mixed with the white of the paper is what's going to give me the pink. I don't have white in this set. So I'm not going to just mix white with the red to create the pink. I'm going to let the white of the paper show through to create that color made my little shavings of the orange red color first on the paper just like I did for the stenciling of the background. And see how I've thinned that out with water and how translucent that ends up. Now I'm going to paint it over the lightest areas first. And I want to be really careful around my edges so that I don't smudge this out. I don't need to be perfectly clean though. If I do make a m mistake, I end up with a brush stroke where it's not really supposed to be. Because I'm gonna go around a lot of this with my black marker later on, I can fix a lot of potential mistakes. So if you're doing this for the first time, like I am, don't, don't be afraid. You're going to, that black marker allows you to hide so much. But I am working pretty slow just to make sure that my lines stay nice and clean as much as possible. Where I want a darker pink, I'm just gonna use less water or darker orange red color. So you can see how much more bold. This is all from the same color. It's just a matter of how much water that I use. Mixing more in with some of my shavings there where I start to run out. You can use a palette for that, and I think it'll it'll keep a little bit longer than what it does on the paper that I'm using. The paper that I'm using, it will start to dry a little bit quicker because it kind of soaks into that paper. And here, I just scribbled onto the paper and then added water, and that worked just as well for me as making the using the shavings, especially given that I didn't need as much, being that I'm not dabbing it on with the other brush. So just making my scribble and then loading with water on a a brush to load it like I'm doing right there, that ended up working the best for me. And it is okay if things aren't perfectly smooth. If you have areas that are a little bit darker in one block and then areas a little bit lighter, it's still okay. And there's a lot of black on the beak. I don't need to worry about that because I've got that black marker. See, I keep dipping that brush back into the water. It does take a lot of water to get this to flow smoothly, but it gives you a sort of watercolor look. And these colors work so well with each other. Just going back and forth as I block in each section, whether it be light, that lighter pink or the darker, just changing up how much water I'm using. Definitely needed more water there. That was not blending nicely. And it's really important when you're painting this style, even though you may look at the flamingo and go, okay, it's all pink, just cover it all one color. It doesn't look right. It looks much better if you can pick out where those highlights would be and let it be very bold. The difference between the light and the dark areas will really work best for this style. Don't try to get such subtle blending like you would on something if you were going more for realism. When you work with this sort of pop art style, it definitely looks better if you hype up the contrast. Be bold where it's, it's kind of light, make it really light where it's sort of dark go really dark. It makes everything stand out much more than trying to over blend and keep everything more muted or more subtle. The goal here is not to create a realistic looking flamingo. You want to be able to tell it's a flamingo, but it doesn't need to be super realistic. So let those colors be bold, have fun with it. I think that's the big thing too. If you can just feel like you're having more fun, be more free with this. Don't try to be too controlled or as controlled you would be as if you were painting realistic feathers and a realistic flamingo. You can be much, much looser with this as far as which areas are very dark and which areas are very light.
Even recording the voiceover and watching this project right now makes me so excited because I'm actually starting a larger acrylic painting with this same theme. I loved how this came out, so I want something bigger to hang on my walls. I am definitely repainting this style again with the flamingo and the pale teal or aqua color background. That will be posted later on on Instagram if you want to see that prog progress. I think I'm going to do circles instead of squares though. Now with these, I'm not really doing much in the way of blending, but you can with the gelatos. You can blend them out with your fingers, smudge them out. You can smudge them out with a paintbrush. Even once they're pretty dry, they'll still smudge quite a bit. So you can do a lot of blending. If you wanted to do realism with these tools, you definitely can. You'll see me stop and pause a lot through here. It's me just deciding, okay, do I want this area to be dark or light? How do I want this to look? Because there, you take so many artistic liberties. You're not just looking at a reference photo and copying it exactly like you would if you were working in photorealism. You're being very, very loose, very almost messy in where you put things. So you'll see me stop quite a bit while I'm trying to make the decision, do I think it'll look better if I do this or if I do that? So that's where a lot of these pauses you're seeing are coming from. I'm going to use the gray to create some shadows, but I don't want it to be that dark. That's really dark. So I'm just going to lighten that up by using a fair amount of water. I'm going to mix a little bit of the red in that as well to create some of the shadows once I get onto the beak. Here's around the eye. Just going to block that in and I'm going to, I know I'll come back through with the marker for a lot of this, so I don't need it to be super clean. I can be kind of messy here. There's where I start mixing in some of the red. We'll muddy that up with some of the green as well. I just want to create a shadow on this side of the beak. That part of the beak, while it is white, it's in a, within a shadow. Darken up some of this a little bit more with the shadow. When you get to these stages, you'll look at it and go, ah, it doesn't really look good. It doesn't stand out enough from the background. Don't worry about it. That's where that black lining will come through with the marker. Here, I wanted this to be much darker, so I just added the red right onto my project. And I'm going to blend that out with my paintbrush with some water. I wanted to hype up that contrast quite a bit. You can see it blends out really, really nicely very smooth. Now if you looked at this how it was now, the light pink areas like around the, the front of the neck, it looks like from a distance it looks like the dark areas that that's the whole neck. The light area just blends in the, the hue or the value is too similar to the background. But once I come through with that marker, it's going to make it stand out. It will separate it quite a bit. It seems scary at this stage, but just know that marker is what's going to keep the flamingo kind of the focus on him separate from that background, even though the light areas are so similar to in value to that background. Blending that out. I can be pretty messy with that. You can smudge it a little with my fingers. Makes it even smoother. I really like this watercolor pad. It's got a little bit of tooth, but it's still fairly smooth. It's considered a cold press, but it's smoother than a lot of the other cold press watercolor pads I've, I've tested. So this is one that I definitely want to play around with, with my watercolor pencils too. Going to use a little bit of yellow and I just dipped the paintbrush in water and pulled yellow straight from the gelato. I didn't make a separate section for it because that's the only area I wanted yellow was in the eye. Although on the project that I'm going to be starting tonight with acrylics with this design I am going to be putting or bees so there will be more yellow in that one. Now on to my favorite part. This makes all the difference in the world. This is with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Big Brush Pen going to start outlining. Now the trick here, I don't want to have an even outline, the same thickness throughout the whole thing. On certain areas, I want to make sure that my line is much, much thicker than on other areas. 
it looks much better with this style. I'm not trying to just make it look like he's outlined. I want these, these lines to really be a part of the art more than just an outline, if that makes sense. Which will actually make more sense once I show you. So I always start when I outline stuff like this, I start by being a little bit more reserved, not going too crazy with the black. I can come back through and darken stuff up. I cannot go back in and lighten it up though. So it's better to start a little bit thinner and then come back and thicken up lines as needed later. So right now, if you look at it, it's just an outline. It doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't have the feel I'm going for yet. Not until I start thickening up some of these lines. in the black areas of the beak there. And I'm not as exact as I would be if I were working in, in realism or photorealism. If my drawing is a little off, it's not a huge deal. If my beak isn't shaped right, I just need to go for close. So here's where I start making a lot of these lines thicker. Much, much more bold. I feel like it just makes such a big difference in how things stand out. This marker worked so well on top of these. I was really impressed. I've never played one with one of with a thick marker like this. I've got some of their thinner markers, but this was really nice. You know, I'm just adding random areas where I'm lining things. It's not necessarily because that's how it is in my reference photo. And I did have a reference photo of a flamingo just to kind of look at to make sure I had the, the beak in the right proportion to the head and that sort of thing. But I can be, I'm, I'm not having to copy that as far as where my black lines go. I just want to make, look at mine and decide, okay, I think mine might look a little bit better if I darken this area up, that sort of thing. That is it for this project. Definitely one of my favorite smart art boxes. If you would like to sign up to get your own smart art box, I have a list of all the countries these are available to below in the video description, as well as a coupon code that will give you a discount off your subscription for life. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there with an orange arrow going to it. You cannot miss it, I hope. If you click on that, that'll help you to keep up to date with all my new art videos every single week. Normally there's five when I'm not busy being sick. <laughs>